Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. You are welcome to the service today, the continuation of Kingdom Ministers United Conference. This is day four, and we're glad to have you in the house today. For those joining us from different places, you're welcome. And we trust that the Lord is going to bless us today, even as he's, all, you know, he's been doing in the past few days. Uh, before we start off, we're going to go into our prayers, and it's my pleasure to invite Prophet Berlin, Diane Randall, to lead us in the opening prayer. Prophet Berlin. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for another day, God. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, God. We thank you, Lord, for this conference. We thank you, Father, because truly this is needed. This is needed in this time. Lord God, in the midst of people having hunger in the land, we need to know how to advance your kingdom. In the midst of the mass mandate, God, Lord, we need to know how to advance your kingdom. In the midst of an earthquake, when people are just going through, don't know which way to go, God. We need to know how to advance your kingdom, God. In the midst of COVID-19, Father, where people are confused on what to get, what, whether to get the shot or not, um, people are going through because of loved ones, losing loved ones, God. In the midst of that, God, in the midst of that hurt and their pain, God, we need to know how to advance your kingdom. In the midst of fire, destruction, in the midst of even a vaccine mandate, God, we need to know how to advance your kingdom, God, where people are losing their jobs, people are losing their homes, people are going through situations, God, hallelujah, they're just waiting on, on an answer, waiting on a solution, God, needing wisdom, needing knowledge, needing understanding, God, in the midst of flooding, God, we need to know how to advance your kingdom in the midst of the hurt and the pain and the chaos that's going on uh, in this world. Still, your people have to, the kingdom of God have to advance. Lord, and we know advancing your kingdom, it, it happens, it's been happening for, for years to come and there has been an increase in it. And, and we know that this happened because of your love. God, we know that you are love. And because you loved us, the kingdom even advanced inside of us. Lord, we didn't even, when it's time, we didn't even know you, God. Because of your love, God. Hallelujah, we became a part of your kingdom, God. And that made your kingdom advance, God. Lord, we thank you, Father, for your, your, your agape, agape love, God that goes farther than self, God. Hallelujah, that, that can heal hurt, God. That can heal our pains, God. That can change our situation. Your love, God, not the way the world love, God. Hallelujah, because we can't trust that love, God. But because of your love, God, hallelujah, your kingdom has been advanced because we love people so much, God, that we, we shared your word or, or we invited them, oh God, we did as your Holy Spirit, we allow your Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to touch the hearts of your people, hallelujah, that bring change and advancement in the kingdom of God. So Lord, we pray on today, God, because we know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness the, thereof the world and they that live in it, God. It belongs unto you, Lord. And we're grateful and we are glad that we serve a true and a living God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this service. We thank you for what you're about to accomplish through the mighty word of God. Lord, we thank you, God. Hallelujah for, for the speaker, Lord. And Lord, we pray, God, that you will continue to use the speaker, God, Hallelujah for your glory, God. Lord, continue to use, hallelujah, the speaker, God. 
Hallelujah. Bless the speaker ministry. Bless, bless the hands of the speaker, God. Bless the family, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray that their family be safe, be safe from COVID, be afraid, safe from any type of sickness or disease that's out here, God. We pray, oh God, that their family, God, hallelujah, would be blessed, God. We want for nothing, Lord, and enlarge their territory, God. Strengthen their bodies, God. Lord, we ask that you strengthen the speaker right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Have your way, God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to speak on tonight. Hallelujah. We welcome you to speak. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speak in every home. Hallelujah. Speak in every heart. Hallelujah. According to your will, your purpose, Lord, we want to, to fulfill that, Lord, your will and your purpose on the earth. And we thank you that this speaker, hallelujah, is able, God. Hallelujah, is yielded, God, is ready, God, is willing, God, is blessed, God, and you have anointed, God, to do the work, God, in season, out of season, hallelujah, the work shall be done. We thank you for the, the mighty anointing on, on the speaker, Lord, and Lord, we thank you, God, hallelujah, for our leaders, Lord, we ask that you strengthen them, Father. By your power and your might, continue, oh God. Hallelujah to the great work that you work in inside of them, God. Hallelujah to bring glory and honor for your kingdom, God. Lord, they, hallelujah, they want you to, hallelujah, hallelujah, to be pleased, God. And that's a blessing for a man, a woman of God, Apostle Francis and the Prophet Deborah. Hallelujah to want you to be pleased, God, with the work that they do, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for what you're about to accomplish on tonight. We thank you that your words say that if your people, which are called by your name, shall humble themselves, hallelujah, and pray, hallelujah, hallelujah, and seek your face, turn from their wicked ways, then they would hear from heaven, and you will forgive their sins and heal their land. We got to pray. We got to pray. We got to pray. Hallelujah. It's a man that we have to pray in this time, in this season. We have to pray for the government. We have to pray for the people. We have to pray for the nation. We have to pray for the president. We have to pray. This is a time to pray for our families. This is a time to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, hallelujah. We bless your name on tonight, hallelujah. We bless each and every person that's a part of kingdom, ministers united, hallelujah, so faithful, so dedicated, so loving, so willing. We thank you, we ask, oh God, that you would bless them exceedingly, abundantly, above all that they may ask or even think, God. We want them blessed, Lord. Enlarge their territory, God. Bless their families, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for everything that they've done, oh God, to be a blessing. Hallelujah to Kingdom Ministers United. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, God. And Lord, we just give you praise on tonight, God, for everything that you're about to accomplish. We ask that you go in every home, God. Let your glory go in every home, God. Feel it, God. Change, bring instantaneous change into the people, God. Hallelujah, though, let it not fall on deaf ears, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray, oh God, that it fall on good ground that would bring forth fruit, fruit, fruit in this season. Hallelujah. Be fruitful and multiply. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory, God. There's nobody like you, God. There's nobody that can do what you do. Hallelujah, nobody can do what you do, God. But you are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings, God. Hallelujah, you're the Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end, God. And Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we give you honor, praise, and glory. Hallelujah. 
In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you for that prayer. And without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring up our speaker for today. I do have a slide. Uh, just uh, by way of uh, introduction, just give me one minute to pull it up. There we go. And up there. All right. All right. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So Apostle Terry will be speaking to us today from Perth, Australia. And the slide there, you know, gives a little bit of information about Apostle Terry Timmins. Terry was born in Cameroon, West Africa, where she accepted Jesus Christ as Savior at a very young age, following angelic visitations. These encounters radically transformed and ignited in her a desire for the presence of God, a passion she has carried all her life. She is happily married to David Timmons, and they both serve the body of Christ and the kingdom of God through their visionary ministry, Unite for Fresh Fires, Ministry, Fresh Fire Ministries International, centered in Perth, Australia from where they carry out missions to the Philippines, to Uganda, to Kenya, and surrounding nations in, in Africa, including church plants and Bible schools. She has traveled to nations in Africa, in India, the Philippines, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Middle East, ministering dynamically through sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and has seen many lives touched and changed around the world. Apostle Terry's passion is for the body of Christ to reflect the values of love and compassion instituted upon a holistic well being, equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, as well as the enrichment of vulnerable lives through humanitarian services. And Apostle Terry joins us tonight from Perth, Australia, to be a blessing to us. Please go ahead and turn your video on so we can see you, Apostle Terry. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Apostle Terry, I know you're there. <clears throat> Is Alvin, are you good to go? <laughs> Okay, let's just give them a minute and see what's going on. <clears throat> just one minute. So Elder Alvin, are you, are you there? Elder Alvin, if you're there, you can connect now. One second, everyone. We're, we're trying to take care of um, a glitch up there. These things happen with online services. 
Okay, your mic is on, but let's turn on your video as well. Hear me? Uh, okay, you came on, but are you still there? Yes, I am. All I'm right, uh, hold on for a minute. Let me take the slide off. Wow. All right, there you are. <laughs> okay, what happened? You took it off again. Amen. Okay, there you go. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay, just give me a minute. I'm going to uh, get your slides on this side, and then uh, we'll go from there. Everybody just give us a minute, okay? Thank you. Okay, see. Amen. All right, okay. I got to do something right. Hold on for one minute. Almost there. Okay. All right. Uh, one more. Thank you, Lord. Bless you. Okay, I'm almost there, just one more thing. 
Ah, praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father's heart. Okay. Amen. Glory to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. Okay. Oh man, how does that almost there? We see the All right, I'm gonna start off with the first one and then um okay. welcome the second Praise one. The okay. Amen. All right, well, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Just uh, you can start off, then I'm going to uh, share the first slide. Amen. Praise the Lord. Grace to Lord. you. Yes. Amen. Grace to you. And I speak peace from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. It's such an honor and a privilege to be uh, able to minister the word of God. Uh, I want to appreciate uh, our apostle, Apostle Chine and Prophet Deborah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share the word of God to the sons and daughters of the Father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I uh, just want to encourage you wherever you are, just um, uh, look to Jesus right now. Let's just open our heart to receive his word. Amen. Uh, it is my prayer that even tonight, uh, the Father will grant unto us the spirit of wisdom, amen, and revelation in the knowledge of him, and that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened, amen. And I pray to the Father that he may grant unto us, according to the riches of his glory, that we may be strengthened with might through his spirit in our inner man, that Christ may dwell in our heart by faith. And I pray that we may be rooted and grounded in love. And we may be able to comprehend all of the saints, what is the width, the depth, of the height of the love of the Father that surpasses knowledge. And we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for um, just moving right now in this place and just as we experience your presence and your love. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. This is the kingdom advancement in the midst of the world chaos. Amen. I want to thank Apostle for asking me to talk about missions. Amen. Missions is the Father's heart. And uh, I pray that uh, the Lord will uh, use this word to stir your heart and that the word of God will become a firm foundation that we can be able to advance in the kingdom, but uh, I'm going to talk about um, uh, the the essence the essence of us aligning our heart uh, to His will and His word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And uh, during the time of this conference, uh, the Holy Spirit had been really working so mightily in me. And uh, one of the things that the Holy Spirit said to me was that uh, He is calling His church, His leaders. Uh, to be steadfast and immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. The steadfastness that we are going to experience is going to come from a revelation of his word, having the revelation of his word, being able to have certainty, whatever we do in the kingdom is founded on his word. So uh, even this morning, I just want to encourage you, just open up your heart as we're going to get into a journey to hear the father's heart. Because when we know his heart, when we experience his heart, when we know his word, when we have a revelation of his will, 
that becomes the foundation of our faith, amen? And we can advance his kingdom in the midst of chaos by the virtue of the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him. I just pray that there be a hunger in your heart for his word, amen. So we're talking about missions, praise the Lord. And most people know uh, missions is all about the Father, amen. And uh, there's no way we can actually involve ourselves in God's mission without actually aligning our heart to the Father's heart, amen. So the Lord will want us this morning to come to a place of alignment, amen, where we can align our heart to the Father's heart. And the only way we can know the Father's heart and the Father's will is in his word, amen. So the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 22, I said, he says, and when he had removed him, he raised, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who would do my will. Amen. So it is that we, when we want to be in a place where we want to do the will of God, it requires a heart connection. The Bible says David is the man after his own heart, and David is the one that has done his will. He looks our word, but it's the heart. But the Lord says, do not look at I think, I think your Wi-Fi is a, a little bit fluctuating. We just lost you there. So if you're back on, please repeat what you were saying. Apository, you there? It looks like did we lose her? Yes, we did. I think we lost her, but she's, uh, she's gonna come back. So let's just uh, be patient for a minute. Okay, Apostle, I see your video, but uh, the sound is not there yet.
Amen. Can okay. you hear me? Praise right, the Lord. Ahead. <laughs> All right, thank you, Father. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, uh, really, the Lord, uh, the Lord spoke to me that uh, in the area of missions and basically uh, advancing the kingdom of God, it requires uh, us as the sons and daughters of God who are used to advance His kingdom. It evolve, involves our heart has to be concerned with the heart of God. Amen. Because God looks into our heart. And whatever we do in his kingdom must be when heart felt the revelation from the heart, uh, we easily get uh, get weary. As the Bible says, we can't be we can't be steadfast and immovable. That is why the Lord will say we have to be steadfast and immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. That steadfastness comes from a place of a revelation of his word, which means that we need to be able to take his word serious. Amen. Too many, too many people place a high price on the externals, not God hard. This is a reflection of the irrelevant expenses in buildings, in lights, and they totally lost tune with God hard. Uh, when we come to missions, we see that uh, people have lost uh, the revelation of the father's heart. That is why they use their finances on irrelevant things. They don't really have a strong revelation of the father's heart. And that is why the Lord will say to us as his sons and daughters that he want to use to advance his kingdom. We need to guard our heart. Amen. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. Amen. So our heart is the core of our being. Our heart is extremely valuable. Our heart is a source of everything we do. That is why Solomon said it is the well-being of our life. The heart the Lord has given to us is a heart of worship. The Lord desires us to worship him. And the only way we can worship him is to have a revelation of his word. Because the worship that the Father seeks is seeking for worshipers who can worship him in spirit and in truth. So for us to be uh, to be a true worshiper, we have to have a revelation of his word because worship, worship, worshiping the father in his word is true worship. And everything we do in the kingdom is an act of worship. That is the reason why in this time of uh, crisis, chaos, we can advance the kingdom because our heart is transformed by his word. His word has become the foundation of our faith. And we have a certainty in his word that the outcome has been revealed to us. And this morning, by the grace of God, I'll be talking about the Father's heart, his word. I'll be talking about also the word of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our King, and what he tells us in regarding to advancing his kingdom. Amen. So a heart transformed by his love it's a drive to advance the kingdom of God. One of the greatest prayer I prayed in my life when the father called me, I prayed the prayer in Ephesians. I asked the father that he may grant unto me the, the riches of his glory that I might be strengthened with might in my inner man through his spirit, that I may be rooted and grounded in the love of the father. It's when you're grounded, he do nothing of himself but he sees what the father do for whatever he does the son also does in like manner we see a union between the father and the son the lord is bringing us to a place where we can be established having the revelation knowledge of the union we have with christ that union is so powerful amen it's that we share in we share it. In his, in his glory. That's why we have to uh, our heart to the word of the Father. Jesus demonstrated a life full and total harmony with the will of the Father. Amen. Why do I say so? These are the things the Father revealed to me in the time when he called me to go and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. These are the things that he dealt in my life to bring alignment in my heart. Amen. The heart is such a powerful force 
that could really help us to stay steadfast and immovable as we advance the kingdom of, of the Father. His coming on earth was to fully fulfill, amen, the will of his Father. So I say this prayer over you, Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful example of the Lord Jesus Christ who laid aside his heavenly glory so that in carrying out your will, he paid for the price for the sin of the world. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to ask you just to close your eyes wherever you are. Just want you to say this prayer with me as you, as you, as you look to the Father. Just allow the Holy Spirit to do a work inside of you. For the Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit. The love of the Father. We cannot be able to advance his kingdom without having the revelation of the importance of his word and his will. And we're going to go straight away to the Father's heart so we can come to a place of harmony as sons and daughters of the Father to advance his kingdom. We're going to go to the Father's heart. Amen. Father's heart. Okay, God loves you. Amen. Love. Amen. John 14, 30 to 31. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandments, so I also do. Arise, let us go from here. You know, love is a powerful mot motivation uh, in advancing the kingdom of God. Each person in the Trinity the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit intensely loves the other with all their heart. The Son loves the Father, amen. John 14, verse 31. The Father loves the Son, John 3, verse 35. Each person in the Trinity is in a strong relationship. We can't quit from advancing his kingdom. There is a love in our heart. And that is why Paul prayed for the church in Thessalonica, amen. He said, now may the Lord direct your heart into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. It is, it is my prayer even tonight, the Lord will direct our hearts to his love. Even as a missionary, as a servant of God, the Lord began to speak to me about the importance of me identifying the different spheres where I'm supposed to love God. Because my first calling is a call to fellowship. My first calling is a call to intimacy. That is why when Jesus Christ called his disciples, the Bible says he called them to come to him. That was a calling to fellowship with him. That is the most important calling. And then he sent them to go and preach. So we have our heart. So we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind. Our mind should be filled with God's word to agree with his heart. And that is why I'm gonna take you in a journey in his word because the Holy Spirit wanna bring an alignment in your heart. Nothing can stop you when you have a revelation of the Father's heart. Yes, nothing can stop you to advance the kingdom. Amen. We should love the Lord our God with all our strength. The way we use our resources, our physical energy, our time, our influence, it matters in advancing his kingdom. And loving the Father with our soul, living from our true spiritual identity. Amen. We know it is in him we live and move and have our being. And that is why in the gospel, we see the apostle Paul was compelled by the love of the father, by the love of Jesus Christ to advance his kingdom. If you will ask me, what is, what is the secret? What is the testimony of my journey with the father? I will tell you compelled by his love and everything that I've done in the kingdom, the Father spoke to me, be compelled by my love and you will be unstoppable. Love is such a powerful force and God himself has revealed and expressed his love to us when he gave his son, Jesus Christ. Paul says in Corinthians, say, for the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died, amen. That is so powerful. So Paul is saying, I am compelled by the love of 
Christ. I am compelled as an apostle because I recognize that it's through Jesus Christ that I receive this salvation. He died for me and I live for him. And my life is to him. And I pray that even as I speak this word, the Holy Spirit begins to move in your heart and begin to compel you uh, in the love of the Father to advance his kingdom. For the love of Christ has compelled me. Advancing the kingdom in the midst of chaos. It is very important that we recognize the importance of fellowship and intimacy with the king. It is his kingdom. And the father is calling us to come into a deep fellowship and relationship and intimacy with, with the king. And when Jesus went up to the mountain, he called to him. That's the first calling. He called them to himself. That's the call of intimacy and fellowship to those he wanted. And they came to him responding, responding to him. Then he appointed the 12 and sent them out to preach. Hallelujah. So we are called to fellowship. Our first calling is a calling of fellowship. That is why even the Bible says that we are royal priesthood when a holy nation. Uh, the, ministry of, the ministry of a priest is to offer sacrifice and this is where God has called us to come to him. Empowerment for missions. We have to understand the Holy Spirit is a, mis it's a missionary. God is a missionary and Jesus is a missionary. You see the harmony. The harmony is there in the, in the Trinity. The Father God is a missionary. He sent his son Jesus Christ as a missionary and the Holy Spirit was sent as well. Amen. It is so important for you to take this word seriously because it becomes the foundation of your faith as we advance in the kingdom of God in the midst of chaos. The word of God gives us a certainty and we base our faith in his word. Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. This was the word of Jesus. Amen. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It means the Holy Spirit is a spirit of power. We cannot witness without the Holy Spirit. And he gave us a promise. I will pray the Father. He will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. We see the harmony. Amen. There is such a harmony between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we need to understand that the Holy Spirit was a gift and a promise given to us. And everything we do in the kingdom, we do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. For it is the Holy Spirit that gives us the guidance. And we see even in the lives of the apostles, how they experience the guiding presence of the Holy Spirit in missions. We see Paul experiencing the guiding presence where the Holy Spirit constrains and restrains him from Asia Minor and put him in the spirit field. I called it the spirit field, the place the Holy Spirit want him to go and, uh, and advance in the kingdom. Amen. Relationship with the Holy Spirit for uh, sorry, Apostle Terry, we're losing you again. I, I turned off your video just to see if uh, that will reduce your bandwidth consumption so that the voice will be better. 
but it looks like that's not helping. Are you there now? Repository, are you? Are you I, Apostery, say something. Talking by Joel, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. So the result of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost was prophecy. Amen. And visions. Paul longed to take the gospel to other nations of Asia Minor on two occasions, but the Holy Spirit said no. Amen. The Holy Spirit directs our service. Sometimes by opening the door, sometimes by closing the door. Mm. The Holy Spirit directed Paul to the field of the Holy Spirit choice. Why this? Why am I sharing this word? This is the foundation church. Amen. The Bible says if the foundation be rooted, what can the righteous do? The early church is the foundation church. We can glean from this church, from the early apostles. We receive guidelines from the early apostles and the working of the Holy Spirit. For we know the word of God is truth. The word of God is truth. It's spirit and it's life. It doesn't change. Paul was willing to submit to his constraining. Amen. Constraining. When we want to advance the kingdom, we need to yield to the Holy Spirit and we need to submit when he constrained us. As a result of this obedience, there was a great victory. And the gospel advanced to Europe for the first time. Amen. So obedience to the Holy Spirit leading can advance the kingdom in the midst of chaos. From the text we have just read, we saw there was a Macedonia cry, come over and help us. It is a reality in missions. There is a cry for us to go in to the field and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. And I want to share that when Paul responded to that leading, there was great victory. Amen. We see that there was the power of God was, re was released through that obedience. We see that even the jailer, people were saved. They received Christ through that obedience. So the Lord is calling us to walk in obedience to the Holy Spirit. We should yield to him. When he constrains us, we should obey. When he, he restrains us, we should obey. It's all about his kingdom. And when Jesus spoke about the kingdom, he spoke about the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a very important aspect of the kingdom of God. So I say God is calling us to participate. He gave us a great commission, our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, go in therefore, make disciples of all nations. Amen. So the Lord is calling us to go and make disciples of all nations. And Jesus modeled his missionary task in a holistic fashion. He joined the great commandment with the great commission. Amen. This is so powerful. He forgave the sins. He fed the hungry. He taught the word. He healed the sick. And the demon were possessed. Why do I share these things? I go back to my first word. The word of God is, is foundation to our faith. We have to build according to the pattern. We have to have a revelation knowledge in the word of God. We have to understand what the word says. We have to go back to the word. Amen. The great commission. Fill the earth with his glory. The Lord spoke to me and said, fill the earth with his glory. I never had a revelation of missions, but the father revealed to me by the Holy Spirit that it is his heart to see the whole nations worship him. Worship plays a very important role in, in missions and the Great Commission. He wants to multiply worshipers all over the world. He wants his name to be famous. Amen. So we have to go and make disciples of all nations. Our role in God's mission. How can we get the gospel to the other side of the world? How can we do it? Romans 10 gives us instructions. People are saved through believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. And the only way to believe is to hear the gospel spoken to them. We go to Romans chapter 10. I'm going to read. Amen. Romans chapter 10. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to go from, from, verse, from verse 9. From verse 13. 
for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach unless they are sent? Amen. So people are saved through believing the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way to believe is to hear the gospel spoken to them. The only way they can hear the gospel is when someone goes and speaks to them. Amen. How can we be part of this great commission? We can pray, we can give, and we can go. We can pray, we can give, we can go. There's so much happening in missions. Uh, prayer has a tremendous impact in advancing the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, you can pray. Uh, for we have a lot of missionaries out there who are going through a lot of persecution. So the Father is calling us to pray. You can pray wherever you are. You can give as well. And you can also go. Even Jesus Christ told us we should pray. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. We should pray to the Father of harvest that he may send laborers into the field. So we can pray. Our prayer has a tremendous influence in this great task. Amen. Now we know the heart of the Father is basically uh, to gather himself a people from all nations. I just want to encourage you as I come to this segment of this teaching, I just want your, your, your heart to just be aligned to the Father's heart so that together we can advance the kingdom. I'm gonna start from the first, amen, amen, amen. So the Father's heart for nations, it is so important that we actually have a revelation of the Father's heart. Remember, the word of God is the foundation of our faith, amen. So we have to have a certainty of the word of God. It keeps us stable, it becomes an anchor to our soul and it gives us that steadfastness. We can advance in the midst of chaos, because we have certainty, this is the Father's heart, this is his will, this is his purpose. That is how we advance, by having the knowledge. Because the breakthrough, every breakthrough you have in revelation knowledge is a breakthrough in faith. Every time that the Holy Spirit gives me revelation knowledge, it's always a breakthrough in my walk with him. So the revelation knowledge of his word is a powerful breakthrough that you can actually experience and your faith can be reinforced based on the revelation of the word. That is why faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So as we create time to not just to serve the father in our feelings, but we can actually come to a place where we take his word as the foundation of our faith, get to understand what is the heart of the father for nations? Why do we go to the nations? Why do we go and spread the gospel of the kingdom? I'm gonna share with you this teaching that will really be a foundation of your faith. And I tell you, when you get this revelation, you'll be on fire. You won't stop it because the word of God becomes an anchor even to your soul, understanding his heart. So we know that the father um, shows his people to be God's holy nation. They will rule and reign with Christ and serve God forever. The Bible begins with God. He is the central focus Throughout the entire Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible is a story of God revealing himself to the world, nations and people of all tribes and tongues to draw to himself in sincere love, expressed in worship, honor, and obedience. God's heart for his people. Just think about it. That should be the foundation of your faith. When you advance the kingdom of God and you find yourself in chaos, you go back to his word. Let the word be a driving force that you can hold on to to be able to advance, knowing this is the father's will and purpose for the nations. Abraham, God's people in his heart. There is God's people, there is God's place, and there is God's presence. Abraham, God blessed him to be a blessing where God the Father himself becomes known and honored. You know, every time I go to nations to proclaim the gospel, I carry in me this revelation that the Father's heart is to see his name be known 
and all not, and raise worshipers all over the nations. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covered the sea. Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. God is calling Abraham for a mission. And God is saying to Abraham, I will bless you that you may be a blessing. There is a top line blessing that is God releasing the blessing to Abraham. And there is a bottom line blessing that has to be released to the nations. Amen. Father's heart, again, missionary heart of the father revealed when Egypt served false God. Worship is really one of the things I'm passionate about that really stirs my heart to go to the nations and proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. His name is to be proclaimed in all the earth. Exodus, we see what happened. Indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. God wants his name to be proclaimed in all the earth. So if you are watching me, you're from America, UK, USA, I want to encourage you to align your heart to the Father's heart for the nations. When we talk of nations, we speak of ethnos, people of different tribes, different tribes and different tongues, ethnic groups. God is to be worshiped and there is none like him on earth. He said, for this time, I will send my plague to you, to your very heart, on your servants and your people. And you will know that there is none like me in all the earth. God is to be worshiped, amen. There is no one like him in all the earth. We need to have a revelation of his heart. This is the word of God. It is so powerful. The word of God, the, God, the word of Jesus, these are the most important words. We need to anchor our soul as we advance the kingdom. It becomes the sound foundation of our faith, the Father's heart, his purpose, his plan is to fill the earth with worshipers. Amen. To fill the earth with his glory, Habakkuk 2.14, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, the earth, the whole earth, as the water covers the sea. That's a very big plan God has for the whole earth. So God was working a powerful strategy to draw attention of the nations to himself. Every time I think about this revelation, I just tremble. I just tremble and there's such an overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit that comes upon me when I think about the Father's heart, his plan, his purpose. It's all about worship. All about worship. You see in Exodus, the Lord said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh. Amen. Announce to him, this is what the Lord says. The word of the Father is so important. As ministers of the gospel, as leaders, we need to take his word seriously. As we advance his kingdom in the, in the time of chaos, let the word be the anchor for our soul. Let the word be the foundation of our faith. Let us advance with revelation knowledge. Let us, let us advance with certainty that this is what God says and he backs up everything he says it comes to pass for his plan and his purposes, they will never be thwarted. God's character and God's integrity is that when he speaks a word, it will never return void. It will accomplish having the revelation of his character will give us a drive to pursue after him and advance his kingdom. This is what the Lord says, let my people go so they can worship me. Worship me It's all about worship. Amen. It's all about worship. Next slide. Yeah. This is the word of the Lord. Let my people go so they can worship me. Sometimes we really rush when we want to advance the kingdom of God. We don't take enough time to really uh, meditate on the word to be able to identify what the Lord says in his word. God desires a place of encounter, a relationship and dwelling. I, I remember a testimony, I went to the Philippines for missions and it was a place called Homonon Island where I had to travel 
uh, in a boat for eight hours in the boat. There was no life jacket and there was home. That was my first mission trip uh, to that island to preach the gospel of the kingdom. There was storm and uh, everyone was afraid in that boat. What kept me in faith is what I'm teaching you. Yeah, the certainty in the word of God. We should really take the word seriously. What God says is very serious. It is the foundation of our faith. For the Lord will say to me, he said to me, Terry, a breakthrough in revelation is a breakthrough in faith. Every time you break through in revelation, you have a breakthrough in your faith. That is the reason why I'm taking my time to share with you everything that the Father revealed in his word concerning his plan, his purpose. That will help you, that will empower you to be able to advance his kingdom in the midst of chaos. So God desires a place of encounter and relationship and dwelling. We see that again in Canaan. The conquest of Canaan, if you read the conquest of Canaan, the purpose was for pure worship alone. We see also when Solomon dedicated the temple, the prayer that he prayed for that temple was a revelation of God's intent for worshipers, for nations to come and see God. I have so many scriptures, but I really don't want to share the scriptures because they're really a lot. But I just want to stir you to study 1 Kings 8.29. This was the prayer that Solomon prayed. It reveals the intent of our father's heart for his name to be famous and worship. He said that your eyes may be open back. Your eyes may be open towards this temple night and day, towards the place of which you said, my name shall be there, and that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes towards this place. God's people. God's place and God's presence. That's all I'm thinking about missions. God's people, God's place and his presence. Nations coming back. You see, when Solomon built the temple, it was for, the purpose was God's, God's place, God's presence, God's people to worship him, to make his name famous. You see nations coming. Queen Sheba heard the fame of Solomon in relation to his God. And she came. The Bible says, when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with her question. She heard the fame. Amen. This is very deep. Praise the Lord. Let's go back to Adam and Eve. The same, God's people, God's place, enjoying his presence on him. We have Adam and Eve. That was a creation mandate. God gave them a creation mandate. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, Adam and Eve. Amen. What for? Praise the Lord. He gave them a mandate in Genesis. Be fruitful. More missionaries. Let them enjoy my presence unhindered. Fill the earth. And he gave them authority. And all this mandate is fulfilled in the book of Acts. The mandate that Jesus Christ gave us is fulfilled as well. It was all the same mandate. There is harmony. There is harmony in the Trinity. And the Lord is bringing us to a place of unity and harmony in his heart and his word. What happened? The mandate failed. Chaos, it failed. Disobedience and they were kicked out. Again in Israel, same, God's people, God's place and God's presence. Bad kings, Jeroboam, disobedience, same problem like Adam and Eve, Worshipping false gods, kick out. Did God stop his mission? He advanced. Amen. It is so powerful. His purpose stands forever. The Bible says, for I am God. There is no other. Can you think about the scripture? There is no other. I am God. And there is no like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, things that are not yet to come. My counsel shall stand. That is powerful and my will, and I will do all my pleasure. Again, God says, my counsel will stand. I will do all my pleasure. He's unstoppable, and we are sons and daughters of the Father. When we have a revelation of our sonship, even in Christ, our union, union with Christ, that we also share in the same glory that the Father gave him. We are unstoppable, that's a revelation. That is a revelation. That's why the church has to be built on revelation. That's what Jesus, 
you know, told the disciples when he asked them, who do you say I am? <laughs> some say you are, some say you are. We can't build, we can't advance the kingdom without having the revelation of who he is and who we are in him. Tower of Babel, chaos. Well, the said, come, let us build ourselves a city, a tower whose top is in the heaven. Let us make a name for ourselves. No, 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 it's not gonna happen. His name alone shall be glorified. Let us make a name for ourselves. What happens? God came and scattered them abroad the face of the earth. God scattered them, his name alone and his glory. I pray even as this word is coming forth, let this word be a foundation of your faith as you advance in different nations as a pastor, as a means of the gospel. Have a revelation of the Father's purpose, intent, and heart for the nations. And finally, a solution from Daddy, our Abba Father. The greatest revelation I got was when Daniel had a vision, he had a foreshadow of God's plan. And we're going to go through that scripture. It's very important. I encourage you to write it down. Daniel 7, 30 to 14. It shows us how God is going to accomplish this through the son of man and through the saints. It's, I was watching in the night vision and behold, one like a son of man, singular, coming from the clouds of heaven. He came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given, amen, dominion, glory, and a kingdom. This is Jesus Christ. Then all people, nations, languages, this is powerful. That's why we go to the nations with the gospel. That's why we encourage people uh, to be part of missions. But how can they be part of mission without a revelation? The Holy Spirit spoke to me the whole week. I want my people to have a revelation knowledge. I build my church on revelation knowledge. Get them the revelation of my heart and my purpose and allow my word to quicken them, to, to move them into action. Daniel says, all the people, the nations, the languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, the one which shall be not destroyed all the people amen so he spoke about the son of man now in verse 18 very important but the saints of the most high glory that is so powerful shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever we have the son of man and we have the saint of the most high the same thing said about the son of man is also the same said about the saints oh hallelujah glory be to god they all have the authority they all have the kingdom and all the nations will be brought into worship through the Son of Man and the saints. That is why the Acts 1 8 mandate fulfills it all. He said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, geographically and also in terms of ethnicity, to fulfill the earth with the glory through us to fill the earth with worshipers. And God began his work to redeem through Christ to restore to the Father worshipers. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. The kingdom of God is the announcement of Christ's conquest over sin. Sin was an enemy of God's kingdom victory over sin and Christ's reign. And that is why Paul had a revelation of us reigning with Christ. Paul says, if by one man's sin, that reign through that man, how much more of us who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we reign in life through one man Christ. Sin has been abolished, amen? The gospel must be preached. Second Timothy 1.10, but now, been reviewed by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. So through the gospel, he has brought light. For if by one man's offense, Romans 5, 17, that reigned through one man, that's Adam, through Adam and the second Adam, Jesus Christ, came and fixed it. Now we can 
enjoy the presence of, of the Father. Unhindered, the sin has been dealt with. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we have life in Christ and we can experience the presence of God. There's no dividing wall. The wrath of the Father has gone to the Son. Now there is peace. We can spread this gospel, God's reign, God's rule over the earth. The good news must spread and harvest many worshipers and make his name famous. Compelled by love. It's very powerful revelation. Advancing the kingdom in the midst of chaos, one can only be radical when it's motivated by love. We know for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believed in him will not perish, but have eternal life. It was God's love that overcame our sin and made a way for us to be right with him. We must be compelled by his love. The love of God compels us to be able to advance his kingdom. In the love of God is compassion. It takes a, a compassionate heart for you to step out of your comfort zone to go to different places of the world to spread the gospel. We see Jesus Christ was filled with compassion. The Bible says that when he met a leper, he was moved with compassion. Amen. He stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am really be cleansed. Thank you, Lord. Apostle Paul was motivated by love in Corinthians. Paul said it. Paul says Christ's love is his driving motivation. Amen. Christ's love compels him. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 11. I read. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Praise the Lord. I read it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So Paul was convinced that Jesus Christ died for sinners and Jesus was the only way to be reconciled to God. This radical perspective shifted completely the way Paul lived. He no longer lived for himself. That is why he could say in Galatians, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I will live, but Christ lives in me. Powerful. He identified himself with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. He was completely consumed with God's mission. The most powerful force on earth is God's love. It was God's love for this world that motivated him to send his son. It is God's love in you amen, that will motivate you to advance his kingdom in the midst of chaos. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, thank you for listening to the word. It is my prayer that um, the Lord will uh, stir your heart and that you may be rooted and grounded in his love so you can be able to express the love of the Father. Wherever God is sending you to go and advance his kingdom in the midst of chaos, in the midst of chaos, come to a place where you have alignment with his heart, his word, his word becomes the foundation of your faith. And the revelation of his word is what is going to give, this, give you steadfastness to advance his kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Uh, thank you, Apostle, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm so blessed to have you in my life. Thank you, Prophet Deborah. And uh, I have some videos, but I don't think I have enough time to share the videos for the missions work. But I pray that this word has really been a blessing to the body of Christ. Amen. Uh, Please you, go Father. ahead and thank pray over the people. Pray over the people for this same anointing for missions. I mean, you've delivered such a powerful word. Now yes, let's Lord. go ahead and pray it over the people. Please go ahead. Yes, Abba Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Wherever you are, just stretch your hands. Just stretch your hands to the Father. Amen. Lord, I thank you for your people watching me right now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I release, Father, grace, grace, grace and peace. Be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. 
through the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, in the knowledge of you, in the knowledge of you. Lord, I pray that you fill them with all wisdom and understanding in your will. Father, I pray for the missionaries from all over the world. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. Just help them wherever they are. Lord, I pray for pastors and teachers and prophets and apostles, Lord, that you begin to move in their heart through your word, Father. For churches, Father, that don't have a revelation of the Father's heart for missions. Lord, I pray that you bring them to a place of alignment, harmony with your will and your word, that your word becomes a foundation of their faith. Even as Jesus Christ promised the Holy Spirit to us, Lord, I pray there be a desire, there be a hunger, there be a deep relationship with the Holy Spirit in regarding to advancing your kingdom. I release grace, I release peace, and I thank you, Holy Spirit. You empower them to be witnesses unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I bless you, Father. Precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for your guiding presence. You are the spirit of truth. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, <laughs> just really praying. I just really sense in my heart, the Lord is really stirring someone. Um, someone has been stirred to step up by faith, to begin to engage in missions. And the Lord will say to you, uh, it is by faith. It is by faith, says the Lord. Don't be afraid, says the Lord. For I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of sound mind. Get out of the comfort zone. Get into the comforter zone. The Holy Spirit zone is the comforter zone. For the atmosphere I have put in you is greater than the atmosphere I have put you out in the world. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Be conscious of my indwelling presence. Be conscious of my indwelling presence. It is my guiding presence. It is my comforting presence. It is my empowering presence. For you have received not the spirit of fear onto bondage, but you have received the spirit of adoption by which we cry out of Father. So the Lord will say to you, press into my word. Press into the revelation of my word, of your sonship a revelation of your sonship, the mystery that we're hidden in the past ages has been revealed to us. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory, the God in you, the Christ in you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Apostle. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. My goodness, my goodness. Thank you so much. You have been such a blessing. Thank you for that powerful word. And yes, we had the glitch, but we thank the Lord for putting it all together. At least we're able to get a, 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 you know, a chunk of the whole thing, and that's beautiful. Apostle Terry, thank you so much. And please extend our greetings to Elder Dave. Yes. Let him know we love him, and uh, we definitely are looking forward to a time in the future when we can actually come together in person. Amen. Thank you so much. And for our viewers, we want to trust the Lord that you've been blessed by this powerful word. Now you don't have a reason not to align with God, both in heart, in fellowship, and in his purpose. His heart is the fellowship, that's intimacy, and then his purpose. As a matter of fact, the only reason we leave is for his pleasure. Revelation tells us, you created all things for your pleasure. They are and we're created. And so sons of God, daughters of God, our lives should be for the pleasure of our Father. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for bringing us this powerful word. Thank you for your daughter whom you have used, Lord, your son also, who is your son also, to bring this powerful word, to show us in your word the Father's heart, the Father's purpose for missions. Lord, align our hearts. Help us, Holy Spirit, to align our hearts with you, that it is your desire for your glory to fill the nations, to be known in all of the nations. We receive that. And help us, Lord, even for the rest of our days to begin to reorder things, to begin to reorder things in our lives, to make this priority, because it is your priority. 
Thank you, Father. We bless those who are on the line with the blessings of the Lord. We commend them to you and to the word of your grace that is able to build them up and give them their inheritance amongst the sanctified. We thank you, Father. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The conference is going to continue tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time. And we're going to see what direction the Lord is going to take us tomorrow. Again, Apostle Terry, thank you so much. And extend our love and our greetings to our Elder Dave and Elder Amen. Alvin. I don't know what happened, but we appreciate you. We know you do so much. And we thank Amen. you so much for I'm sure you helped put the slide together. So thank you so much. So everyone, thank you again for being a part of this. We love you all. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day or good night for those who, you know, who are in the evening time, wherever you are. But join us again tomorrow, same time. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye now. Amen.